Aloha champions and welcome to our Wednesday social studies video for this week. We're still talking about mountains, but instead of animals conquering those mountains with their hooves that cling or their winter coats, we're talking about humans and how humans sometimes struggle with mountains, especially when going to war with somebody surrounded by mountains. We're talking about chapter three, mountains as barriers. So let's learn how humans and mountains don't usually interact peacefully. Our big question for today is to understand how have some mountains acted as barriers to prevent invasion? How have mountains acted as barriers? That's our question for today. What spoils my sleep is not the strength of the enemy, but the immense mountain barrier by Jose de San Martin. San Martin crosses the Andes. The Andes are a mountain range located in South America, close to the country of Chile, where the story of the dreamer is taking place. In the early 1800s, Colonies in South America began seeking independence from Spain. One of the leaders in the fight for independence was Jose de San Martin of Argentina. After Argentina became independent, he decided to help defeat the Spaniards in Chile and in Peru. However, he had one major problem. San Martin and his army were in Argentina on the eastern side of the Andes. San Martin had to cross the Andes to get to Chile. San Martin chose to cross the Andes using a pass that was nearly 15,000 feet high. If you remember when we talked about the height of mountains, I said Mount Humphreys is about 12 to 13,000 feet tall. This mountain pass is 15,000 feet tall. And that's usually a low point in the mountain that he has to cross. Those Andes Mountains are huge and new because we know they're so big. The bigger the mountain is, the new, younger it is, more or less. Our vocabulary from this page is a pass. A pass is a place in the mountains that is lower than the surrounding peaks and that people use as a path through the mountains. So usually if you have a peak over here, peak over here, it might dip down to a pass. That low point is where they want to go to. And that's still 15,000 feet tall here in the Andes, much taller than Mount Humphreys. So a lot more exhausting to get through. Here we have an artist's rendition or painting of Augusto Ballerini, or the artist is Augusto Ballerini imagining San Martin and his army crossing the Andes up in the tall mountains. And they look like they're riding horses, not goats, and horse hooves don't hold or grip as well as mountain goats do. So let's find out how the Andes hurt San Martin and his quest to help Chile and Peru fight for their independence against the Spaniards. The Andes Mountains are difficult to climb and tasty as a mint, but we're talking about the mountains, not the mint. They are steep and rugged and even the passes are high. At such elevations, it is very cold, it is very windy. The air has less oxygen and people who aren't used to being so high up can become confused and sick with elevation sickness. Some even die in those in that thinner air. San Martin and his army set out in early 1817. They had 5,000 soldiers, 10,600 mules, 1,600 horses, and 700 head of cattle. They also had to get all of their supplies, including heavy canyon, cannons, over the mountains. The soldiers, they were the lucky ones. Most of them survived. The animals, however, weren't so lucky. Only 4,000, or less than half, 
of their total mules and 500 horses made it into the country of Chile, and none of the cattle were left. The struggle paid off, though. The Spaniards in Chile were caught by surprise and were quickly defeated. San Martin also won the battle in Peru. By crossing the Andes, San Martin and his soldiers helped Chile and Peru gain independence. But crossing that mountain pass was not easy. It was acting as a barrier and kill off almost half the livestock of cattle, horses, and mules that were trying to make it over the mountains. Okay, Getting over or through mountains. Mountains cause difficulties for all travelers, regardless of who you are, mountains are tough. Not just for armies, still people have managed to find ways to cross mountains. So here's some cool facts about those Andes mountains in Argentina, Chile, and Peru. The Andes are the longest mountain range in the world. They stretch 5,500 miles through seven countries along the west coast of South America. Jose de San Martin crossed the Andes at Los Patos Pass at 15,000 feet, 4,572 meters. Los Patos is higher than the tallest mountain in North America's Rockies. So even taller than the tallest mountain that Mount Humphreys is a part of in the Rockies. Huge, tall mountains. This was the pass. This was the low point that they had to get through. Pretty fascinating stuff. Here we have a winding road going through a mountain. Looks like so much fun to drive, my favorite type of driving, but I digress. Sometimes people build roads that go in S-curves or switchbacks back and forth across the mountainside. That way cars and trucks don't face such a steep climb all at once. Even so, traveling these mountain roads is tricky. Sometimes you can't go around or over a mountain, but you can try going through it. How? By using a tunnel. People have dug tunnels for thousands of years. However, new machines were invented in the 1800s, which allowed people to dig tunnels through mountains. The first mountain tunnel was a railroad tunnel built through the Swiss Alps between France and Italy. This tunnel took more than 14 years to dig out. Today, a tunnel for cars, buses, and trucks runs beside the railroad tunnel. A tunnel is a passage through or under a natural feature such as a mountain. They have plenty of tunnels through mountains or under roads and so forth. But if you can't go over it, can't go around it, go through it. Mountain passes and gaps. Well, a gap is a low place in the mountains, often created by a river. So passes just naturally where the mountains are low. A gap is a low point where a river runs through, and that might be a good place to get through that mountain that's trying to tell you, no, you can't do that. Mountain passes and gaps. Here's an example of another tunnel digging through. When people need to cross mountains, they look for the lowest places to cross. These are called passes and gaps. In the late 1700s, Daniel Boone helped create a road through the Appalachian Mountains of Virginia. Using the Cumberland Gap to cross these mountains, settlers in the U United States followed this road to new homes in Kentucky. Further north, engineers and laborers used the Mohawk River Gap in a clever way to pass through the Appalachian Mountains. In the early 1800s, engineers and laborers built the Erie Canal across New York. The canal dramatically cut the amount of time needed to travel from east to west across the state by going through a man-made river or a canal they're e able to get through because water moves through mountains and so forth. In setting what eventually became the western United States, wagon trains needed to cross the Rockies to reach the Pacific coast. They used passes including the South Pass of Wyoming. 
All right, so here we have some elevations about some of these gaps and their surrounding mountains. The Cumberland Gap, which helped get people into Kentucky, has a gap of 1,600 feet elevation. Its mountains are 6,683 feet tall. So go to the river, close to the river, a lot lower than going through the mountains. In the Rocky Mountains, when we had to get some of our covered wagons through to get to California, Oregon, and Washington, they found a river gap that was 7,500 feet tall compared to the mountains, which are 14,439 feet tall. And where they had to go for San Martin to get into Chile to help them fight the Spaniards, the pass was 1,500 15,000 feet tall, taller than the mountains in the Rocky Mountains. And the nearest mountain was 23,000 feet, almost 8,000 feet more. Tall, tall mountains. A wagon train is a line of wagons traveling west in the United States in the 1800s. A plateau is a large area of high, flat ground. Mountains and people. Do we get along? Probably not. Long ago, people began to settle and create villages. Most people chose to settle in valleys, like we did here in Arizona, here in the Valley of the Sun, or in the plains, like the Great Plains. But some people choose to settle high up in the mountains. Some settled on the mountainsides, others on plateaus in the mountains. A plateau is a flat area of high ground. Sometimes plateaus stand on their own. Sometimes they are part of a mountain range. If you think back to our first book, Sing Down the Moon, we focused on the Navajo people, and they would move high up onto the plateau to make their village, or their seasonal village, depending on the weather. And they also saw remains of what was the Anasazi and their cliff dwellings, the dwellings built into the side of the cliff. So people did that. Not everybody, but few people. So why do people settle in these high places? Well, maybe they want to escape from enemies. Maybe the beauty of the mountains attracted them. We don't know. People who live in the mountains often are separated from other people. For example, the Basques settled thousands of years ago in the Pyrenees, which are the mountains that separate Spain and France on the Iberian Peninsula. The mountains cut the Basques off from other people. Over time, their language became quite different from Spanish and French. So they're somewhere between Spain, somewhere between French, but because they don't have a lot of trade or travel, they kind of develop their own language using a little bit of this, a little bit of that, to the point where they're almost indecipherable. Nobody can understand what they're saying because they have their own language and culture. People living in the Andes Mountains live at very high elevations. And so do the people who live in the Himalayas near Mount Everest and K2, those really tall mountains near India, Tibet, and Mongolia. And when people from lower elevations travel high up to the mountains, they tire easily. They find themselves short of breath and they get headaches. Yet the people who live high up in mountains don't have these types of problems. Why is that? Well, because they have lived at high elevations for hundreds of years. Their bodies have adapted to the mountain environment, just like our goats and their hooves adapt to their mountain environment and our cactus wrens and owls and other desert dwelling creatures have adapted to living in the desert. You get your bodies adapt and change in certain ways to get used to these uncomfortable circumstances. Okay. Here we have a Basque shepherd tending to his flock of sheep high in the Pyrenees Mountains. But mountains have both positive and negative effects on history. Mountains have prevented the spread of new ideas and stopped education. And they made it difficult for people to communicate with each other. 
However, mountains have also offered protection and contributed to the creation of some very unique cultures throughout history. Perhaps now, when you see mountains off in the distance, or drive over or through them, you will think about how they have helped shape our world. And certainly, all the mountains around us here in Arizona have shaped our world in a very unique way that we might understand a little later on. But think about these mountains and how they might be friendly to some people and not so inviting to others. Think about these mountains as barriers. You have five to 10 questions to answer on Google Classroom. Take your time, stay awesome, and I will talk to you real soon.